Thanks everyone for attending. Uh, my name is Aman and today we're talking about how to increase your brand's e-commerce revenue or e-commerce's profitable revenue via SEO. Um, and we're New Optima and we're supported by DZ and EasyShip. So thanks so much for joining. It's going to be a very uh, interesting webinar with lots of lots of information. Victor and I are planning to give as much away as possible. So yeah, 160 plus attendees. We have VCs, founders, CMOs, heads of growth, heads of SEO, agency owners, content writers, editors. We have a lot of people on this call um, in the ecosystem. So amazing to meet everyone. Um, and hello to the people that are joining us for our third content playbook session. So for a bit of context about who we are, just before we kick off, uh, my name is Aman and I'm the head of growth. Um, and I'm the head of growth of a company called Alpha Well Brands. So we're a consumer house of brands. So we own alphagreen.io, 96 North, Yawns, Petcan, uh, and a few other stealth projects. And internally, we've built an in-house agency, which currently serves 30 plus clients, mainly VC backed, um, many in the consumer space, but also in B2B, SaaS, uh, FinTech, cyber, et cetera. So we have a lot of experience. Um, I'm joined with Victor. Victor's our head of SEO. Um, he spent 15 years doing SEO, so basically half his life. So if there's anything or anyone I trust more about a single growth channel, it's Victor. I, I don't know anyone that spent 15 years in Facebook or Google. So it's super interesting to hear insights from him. And you know, to kick it off very quickly, um, we run lots of polls during webinars, so we understand how everyone um, can benefit from this. So the first question is, What's your experience with SEO? So once you answer this, we'll have a really good idea of how to tailor the, the content of this webinar. Awesome, thank you. 20% have responded, 30%, 50%. Awesome. Cool, this is a really good group. Um, we have 10% who have no SEO experience. Um, 50% who understand what it is, but that's about it. Actually, more 40% now. Um, and 50% have implemented SEO on a project before. And there are no SEO gurus, unfortunately. Just, just you, Victor. So that's awesome. And then a final question is, how did you guys hear about this event? Was it through LinkedIn, our email list, EasyShip, DZ, colleagues and friends, um, or other? And this will just help us put our marketing budget in the right places. Thank you so much. Awesome, cool. So 20% LinkedIn, 30% email list, 30% easy ship, and then 15% word of mouth. Cool, awesome, thank you so much, guys. All right, so it's time to kick it off. Um, bit of background, why, why can we talk about e-com? Um, we've had a lot of successes in e-com SEO, as an agency, we have a bunch of e-com clients from a spurning and drinks brand to the number one CBD brand to a wedding dress company all the way across to pets and food. So we have a lot of experience and we also own our own brand. So everything we implement, we always try to do it on our own brands first um, so we can learn and we can, we can adapt in situations. So for an agenda today, um, there are essentially four bits to the presentation. First bit, I'm going to tell you very honestly five truths of e-com SEO, which we believe very deeply um, in all our products and all our offerings and as a brand. I'm then going to give you basically the single product e-com site playbook and the multi-product e-com site playbook. Now, these playbooks translate across to anything really that has listings. So marketplaces benefit from this playbook. Um affiliate listing sites benefit from this playbook. So this playbook really works across anything that you have either single or multiple listings. Then as a bonus, I'm going to talk about how you do market cross channel marketing. So this means how do you layer on SEO, PPC and email all together to drive a really good ROAS on your back end. Cool. Um, let's, let's not do a poll. Um, let's talk about truth one. SEO CAC beats PPC CAC in the long term. So this is a graph of customer acquisition cost as a function of time. 
And if you look at the PPC line, you'll see that it's trending upwards and to the right. And if you look at the SEO line, it's trending downwards and to the right as well. So for context, um, and very quickly, I'm going to ask everyone, what channels are you currently getting new customers from? And this will help me uh, tailor the next bit. So how are you currently driving new customers? I just realized I didn't do an other, so sorry if there's no other. Um, just answer how best you can. Oh, no, I did do another. Cool. So majority of people on this call, um, let's say 60%. Again, it's not. So 60% said Meta, 50% said Google Paid. Some said SEO and more than I thought would say YouTube. So 20% said YouTube. Cool. Really interesting. So with a lot of these channels, but specifically Facebook and Google, because those are quite interesting channels that everyone said yes to, um, you suffer from this PPC going upwards line. Um, and it's a function of a few things. Personally, PPC success is relatively hit and miss. If you're on Meta, you're testing lots of creatives. And if you're on Google, you're competing with lots of people who want bottom funnel search traffic. Ads also get more costly over time on both the Google platform and the Facebook platform. And this is because both are an auction-based bidding platform. So on Google specifically, if you have a competitor and your competitor sees your ads and they say, look, this guy's clearly making money from the ads because he's been running it for a long time. He's going to copy your ad copy. He's going to copy your keywords you're targeting. And as a result, you're going to have to bid extra for that keyword that was working. So in this scenario, your CPM would go up and you'd have a higher CAC. Equivalently on the Facebook end, um, it's extremely easy to start an e-com store right now. So if you start seeing success in e-com and you shout about it, people like to copy very quickly, either the drop shippers or even real brands. And they will basically go into ad library, look at your creative. Um, and I've done this so many times myself, copy the creative and look at the same audience. And again, as a result, someone else basically copies what you're doing, bids on the same customer and results in you increasing in your CAC. So this is what happens in PPC. Um, but at the beginning, it's cheap. And it's, it's in the short term, it's a great channel. Now, in the long term, if you think about it the other way, SEO is a very different channel. SEO is a CapEx in the sense that your acquisition cost at the beginning is ridiculously large. I've built models where I've seen the CAC at the beginning be 18 grand, for example. Um, but there comes an inflection point. You've got to model this out where your CAC is the same as your PPC CAC. And over time, your CAC falls and drops and asymptotes to zero or tends to zero. And this is because customer acquisition cost, the formula is investment over number of leads. So if you stop investing in SEO, you still get customers next month. And therefore your denominator gets bigger and therefore that overall CAC number tends to zero. So this is the first truth of SEO and PPC that your SEO CAC does beat your PPC CAC, but in the long term. And so you've got to model this out to work out when is this inflection point. Sometimes it's seven months, sometimes it's two years. It really depends on your unit economics. Cool. Truth number two, to win at Ecom SEO, you need three types of pages. Um, they are blog, category, and product. So every Ecom store should have this, um, especially if you're multi-product. If you're single product, you might not have the category one. So your blog page, um, this is a Farfetch example. So you have the blog page for Farfetch, which is, how to start your watch collection. The category page is all the watches, gifts. And then the third page is a very expensive uh, ring, I think. Um, so that's the three options you have. And they all, all those three mirror the awareness funnel. So your top of funnel is your blog. I, for example, how to start a watch collection. Your middle of funnel is your category page, i.e. free diving watches. So the consumer searching for that is looking for watches that serve that purpose and then your bottom funnel which is your product is uh your specific keyword search that combines the brand and the product name so this one rolex c dweller watch this consumer knows exactly what watch they want to buy they know what brand they want to buy it from and so they are very very far down the funnel and they're ready for purchase so there's three different pages um, or types of pages with three different awareness funnels 
So this is really interesting um, because this will serve as the main cornerstone for most of the presentation. So just remember that we have three types of pages. So I'm going to hand it over to Victor now to go through truth uh, three, four, and five. Cool. And you're on mute, Victor, as well. Yeah, thanks, Aman. Hello, everybody. And uh, let me share my screen. You can see my screen now, yes. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, cool. And I, I just realized we could add the slide that SEO is actually sometimes the only channel you can use because for some businesses and some models, for example, for a marketplace model, because uh, like your margin is not just allowed you to run any other marketing channel because of like your profit margin is not big enough to 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 be able to get PPC traffic, but yeah. So yeah, let's talk about truths about search engine optimization for e-commerce, e-commerce projects. And uh, what people and uh, what types of pages you need to have on your website to drive traffic. What's the main mistake people usually doing is they think about e-commerce project as and like whole structure as about like that main keyword, which will attract you uh, almost like the biggest part of your revenue and like some smaller, not important keywords. But what we need to keep in mind that uh, different types of pages has different conversion rate and uh, more general keywords, which are usually associated with a homepage or with uh, like main categories, for example, wedding dresses, that pages and pages associated with that types of keywords usually has less um, lower conversion rate compared to some products pages and more like niche down small categories. For example, when people are looking for uh, red silk wedding dress, they know exactly what they want and they are most ready to buy. When people looking for just wedding dresses in general, they 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 have like much smaller buying intent. So that's what we need to keep in mind. And another like uh, th important thing to keep in mind that blog pages usually drives you much lower conversion rate um, than people usually expect, but we still need them. And uh, there are several reasons why we still need the blog pages on e-commerce website. First of all, um, they can convert really good if you will be able to target people with high buying intent. So not write, uh, so do not write, do not start writing uh, blog content with some general keywords and informational keywords, for example, like history of wedding dresses. But if you will choose a keyword, how to choose a wedding dress or like the best time for wedding, you targeting people who are really close to that purchase. So that's, that's good, that's close to bottom funnel traffic. Uh, blog pages are also a good way to create an email list and uh, like use in your other marketing campaigns. And uh, that's the only way to target for e-commerce projects, um, keywords which are associated with uh, like people who are looking to solve some problem. So if your product can be used to solve any problem, you literally create an article about like how to solve like this problem and offer your product as a solution for that. And uh, we've done that multiple times and it works uh, surprisingly well. Um, there is, uh, the blog is also the only way to target keywords about your competitors, because obviously you cannot get your categories pages or product pages ran for your competitors keywords. But for example, if you are uh, if you will create a page, your competitor versus competitor, or like competitor one competitor's product versus another competitor product, or your competitor product reviews, you will be able to attract people who are about to buy a product from your competitors, but you you don't want them to do that. You want them to buy a product from uh, from your website. So you kind of can get people who already like holding money in their hand and ready to go to the competitor and bring them to your website and convince them that your website, your um, product is better. And um, this strategy, when you like not talking bad about your competitors and when you do like absolutely transparent and uh, 
like trustworthy comparison. Uh, the strategy don't have any like negative side. And um, another another important point is um, amazing blog pages can attract natural uh, high quality backlinks. So you can just create really good, and we really saw that multiple times with our clients. You can create really high value content for your blog. And people, when they will see some value in your blog or they will um, treat you like an expert in a niche, they can refer to you, uh, especially if you will mention some studies or like statistics, and you will get a lot of backlinks to your pages for free. And the beauty is backlinks will affect not only just that pages, but they will affect your whole website, whole domain. Whole domain will become stronger and whole website will go up especially your category pages and um, blog pages. And um, category and product pages will rank much better when you, you will have a huge blog traffic because you will increase topic authority. And uh, that's like a general idea, but we have a really good proof to that because uh, usually they just website growing and a lot of things going on uh, with the website in the same time. And we really need to understand that like what's the effect of all that blog pages. And we had really, really interesting situation where uh, we monitor our previous clients' websites and we saw like really interesting situation when website was sold to another owner and the new owner uh, maybe was going through like some statistics and find out that there are a lot of uh, blog pages on the website. And that blog pages was not giving him any sales. So he decided to cut off all blog pages. And as you can see on this chart, um, blue line is amount of uh, organic pages. Uh, so like it, it, almost like 90% of a website was a blog pages and there was deleted. There, there are some like delay in Ahrefs indexation of uh, that blog pages. So that's why we have that, that delay, uh, but it was, it happened at the same time. You delete a lot of blog pages. They delete a lot of blog pages. They lost a lot of traffic. And as you can see on a screenshot uh, at the bottom, uh, all that like shoppable pages, which is category pages and uh, product pages also dropped down significantly. So they lost immediately like 90% of traffic for product and uh, category pages as well. So that's why uh, we 100% sure that uh, blog pages helps uh to rank your category pages and uh, at this point i will pass back to aman awesome cool so a couple of questions have already come in so i think it's a good time to handle them so nicole asked when establishing a blog page how often should you post to gain a good following um so i'm going to rephrase that question how often should you post to get traffic um Mm -hmm. The more, the better is, is the short answer. The more content you can create. It's also a function of your budget. Um, but generally, I'd say you should be posting at least, you know, once to twice a week to get a good cadence. But if you look at any good case study where it's gone from zero to 50K traffic, they're generally posting 10 to 15 times a month at a minimum. So you, the more you volume you do, the better. If you try to extend your content creation over a year or two years, what we generally find is you won't see the ROI fast enough and you will probably just lose steam or lose faith. So it's a channel where if you do the upfront work and you do like the CapEx investment, you will see a much better result. It's like you buy a house that needs a bit of work done to it and you move in and you think, okay, look, I'm going to sort this house out in two weeks. You'll get it done. If you decide I'm going to spend the next year getting the kitchen nice, getting the bathroom nice, it just probably won't happen. Um, Gabriella, when you start a blog page, do you start with just one article or is it better to upload more? So customers can have a variety from day one. This is a really interesting question because it assumes that customers read blog pages. Um, the honest answer is they don't. What happens with blog pages is they're purely there as landing for incoming Google traffic. It's very rare that you have a consumer hit a product page and then go to a blog page afterwards for more information that they don't normally do that in the navigation of your website. If they want more information after looking at your product page, they will go and Google that question again, and that's how they'll find you. So it doesn't matter about variety, just keep uploading. Cool. Um, truth number five, 
work through SEO back to front. So we've told you a lot about how some pages convert better. Um, we've told you you should create a lot of pages. So the better way to do SEO is start back to front. Think about site structure. Think about the pages you want to create and go backwards up the funnel. So first you want to create product pages. Then you want to create category pages. Then you want to go to blog pages. And then finally, when you have all the structure and your main content reached out, then you can start doing the backlinks and the PR and you push that to your category page. The reason why I say do the backlinks last is because um, you can get a lot of really good results just from creating content. And backlinks are kind of like adding fuel to fire. You don't need to add the fuel straight away. The second piece I'd say is you drive it to your category page because I've seen numerous examples where uh, e-com brands decide to discontinue a line item, discontinue a product. And if you had built all those backlinks to that one product, you would then have to 301 redirect them. And then you might lose out on some link juice or some SEO juice. But more likely your category, category pages will remain and they generally have higher traffic volume. So you kind of generally want to push the category as this middle piece or your homepage. So in general, there are five truths to e-com SEO. One, your SEO CAC beats your PPC CAC in the long term. Two, you need blog, category, and product pages, and generally they mirror the awareness funnel. Three, category and product pages bring in a higher conversion rate traffic. Four, you need blog pages to actually rank your category pages because of topical authority. And then five, you need to build out SEO backwards. It's really important you look at the levers and the growth levers and start from the highest converting asset all the way up to the lowest converting asset. So go product, then category, then blog, and then move into backlinks once you want to add fuel to the fire. So at this moment, I want to chat about EasyShip very quickly. Um, EasyShip are helping us with this event today. Um, and you can get $53 of shipping credits if you jump on their website and you create an account, super easy. Um, I've used them before. And what I really like is they have these dynamic rates at checkout. So if that's of interest to you, um, I will drop a link in the chat. So you can literally click on that link and get $50 worth of free shipping pretty quickly for your e-com store. It's super easy integrations, um, not much effort. So. Love a bit of easy ship and Nicole loves them too. That's very good. Um, cool. So in terms of agenda, I've gone through the five truths of e-com e e SEO. I've told you how amazing easy ship is. And I, I want to talk about single product e-com sites versus multi-product e-com sites. So I'm going to hand it off to Victor. He's going to go through a really interesting journey with you, but I want to ask a very quick question. And it is, are you a single product or multi-product website? So what that means is, do you sell only a single product, um, i.e. you only sell one drink, or do you sell lots of drinks? I would say one drink with like five different flavors, it's a five single flavor. product. Correct, correct. So, um, and depending on this answer, we're going to spend more time on that strategy. Cool, so, oh, it's, it's moving around. Okay, so we have 20% single, 70% multi, but 10% say something else. If you're part of the 10% that have a something different, do you mind just messaging it in the chat so we understand? Or why yours is not more single or multi? Okay, cool. We'll, we'll, we'll find that out afterwards. But if you can message it, that'll be very mm. interesting. Um, Awesome. So I'll let you take over, Victor. Our agency website, we work with product clients. Okay. Mm -hmm. Again. So, yeah, you can see my screen now. Yes. Yeah. And just you can share me. Amazing. So, yeah, types of e commerce projects. And when we talk about types of e commerce projects from like owner's perspective, from like general marketing perspective, uh, e e people usually divide them by this is a like fashion brand, this is like a house and wellness, this is like uh, some devices or something like that. So people divide by a product, but from SEO perspective, 
it's more like it's a single product website or, or it is multi-product website because like, um, and uh, a, a lot of websites which has a lot of products really have the same strategy behind. And a lot of websites who has single product also have different, uh, have the same strategy behind. So let's go to that strategy. There is a pool, Aman. Yeah, the poll was the last thing, so sorry. Uh, Carry on. Okay, no <laughs> problem. So single product website pages and single product website strategy is, uh, is more complicated stuff. It is kind of more easy, but more not so obvious and more complicated. And uh, it happened to be that one of our really good case studies, which we will, which I might mentioned before, where we got from zero to 44K just in the six months in uh, organic traffic for Spirulina brand, a Spirulina sparkling drink. We were able to get that even we don't have any products except like one product and don't have any categories. How we achieve that? We've created a lot of listings pages. For example, examples of listings pages is like best detox drinks, best birthday present, best MacBook accessories, whatever. And you can just create a page and the list, uh, obviously your own product, for example, for best detox drinks, you can list your product and uh, like tea, water, whatever, uh, make it a home drink and uh, like create an article which will explain why your product is better. And uh, there are also category of pages uh, in your blog is like solve problems pages. For example, how to fall asleep faster. If you have a single product website and your single product is a sleep and pill, um, you need to have all the articles about like sleeping problems because a lot of people are struggling with that. And you, you need to understand like what customers need. It's like part of keyword research. It's not, not only about like keywords and, and like creating pages. It's about what people really need and how my product can serve their needs. So we can create uh, a lot of pages uh, which will explain how to deal with their problem and uh, how our product, we can uh, help them. And another big category is competitors pages because especially with a single product website, if you have a competitors who've done their marketing, who've done their PR and people looking for your competitor to name plus reviews or competitor versus competitor or like competitor discount, coupons, any questions, you can have um, pages like that to be able to get that traffic, which I, as I mentioned before, is really bad and final and ready to buy people. As an example, there is a page on your like left side where you can see a page of top 12 best Spirulina brands. And we literally create a page when, where we explain in what we can offer, like a full Spirulina drink, uh, which is sparkling drink with Spirulina and other Spirulina brands. And we will not be able to rank for that keywords for that kind of keywords if we we'll, like talk name our page like top 12 spirulina brands and have only one brand because like we will understand it's not relevant and you will have a huge uh, amount of people who will just close your page um but with pages like that we were able to get a lot of conversions and that's to be honest one of the most successful pages in terms of sales on whole website uh and as you can see uh, only this one page got more than 1000 keywords and i'm saying more than 1000 because 1000 is a limit in the google search console probably like some of you recognize that this screenshot is from google search console and we were able to get like literally more than 1000 keywords and get a lot of traffic for really relevant keywords with that specific page and as you can see a lot of pay, a lot of keywords are on the first page and some of them are even on the first position Another approach is to like solve problem example. For example, we have an article on our client's website, how to fight anxiety without medication. And we can, if we have a product which will help fight an anxiety, it, it could be like whatever, like big, nice pillow, uh, some music box with the lights, whatever. Uh, we can offer that product. Uh, to people who are looking to how to find an anxiety. 
And uh, with that page as well, one single page, data for one single page, more than thousand keywords for one page, a lot of keywords on the first page, a lot of traffic, uh, and a lot of sales, obviously. And the example for competitor versus competitor, if you have your, like, if your competitor is quite, quite popular, you can just basically go to Ahrefs or SEMrush and type your, in keyword research section, type your competitor's name and like VS, like versus, and uh, you will see all uh, keywords which are contain your competitor's name and like versus. So you will be able to find what people are comparing your competitor to. And if you will create that pages, you will be able to get the traffic to your website. And in some cases, that's this is a really bottom of traffic which can drive your sales like crazy. Multi-product website is even more interesting because all technique which we can use with a single product website are good for multi-product websites. So all listings, all solve problems, all competitors, but we have like huge benefit in this situation because we have categories and we have a lot of products and uh, a lot of products means a lot of keywords and you can attract a lot of traffic to your website and categories is uh, it, it is like it's hidden gem because people can't even imagine how many keywords you can get with like properly structured categories and i will give you some really good examples categories examples for example, you have a wedding dresses website and you can create like obvious categories by color, by like purpose, by, uh, or like dresses website. And um, for like party, luxury, cheap dresses and uh, categories like that. And uh, there is a website from one of our first clients where we have created a lot of, like a lot of categories for uh, wedding dresses and uh, define a lot. On this screenshot, you can see top pages report from an Ahrefs, and you can see that uh, we have literally more than one and a half thousand pages, which are ran for different keywords. And as you can see, a lot of these pages, it is like category pages, um, which are divided by some, like some style or some color or some type. And uh, it's it's even like surprising that the most successful page is like elegant wedding dresses or like satin wedding dresses or like uh, long sleeve wedding dresses. And just because we have done such a good keyword research and we were able to find all that search demand, we divide all that search demand into clusters and we combine that like keywords into keyword clusters and we create a page like category for every possible keyword cluster and we optimize that page and make it indexable and index it uh, with a Google, uh, we were able to get a lot of keywords. Some pages has like almost 5,000 keywords from Ahrefs, which means uh, in a Google search console, real data is even bigger. Um, and just super nice hug, which is not obvious, but works. And we've done that multiple times and it always worked like magic. You can just duplicate your category and call it another way. And that will work if you will um, really go through your products and find like relevant products. And uh, you will write good metadata and put at least some content, like at least like 100, 200 words of content on your website. So for example, you have a leather dresses, you can call that like rave outfit and you have a new category and new keywords, new traffic. And if you, that traffic is like relevant, if your product is relevant to that traffic, you'll get a new sales. Example, not just from, um, from like theory, but on practice, the same screenshot from Google Search Console. We had um, this website with fashion wear and uh, this website was like, and still quite successful in terms of like traffic and positions. And we just create, we realize that uh, almost every item on a website has a really big size like option, the like XXL. And um, there are a lot of search demand for plus size fashion wear. And that 
search demand is not like keyword uh, difficulty is pretty low. So competitors are not aware of that and not really targeting that keyword. And we just like copy and paste almost like a lot of categories. We've checked um, search volume for every single category, like plus, plus size keyword. Um, and we literally create 41 categories, just copy and paste usual categories and uh, add plus size into URL, into a title, into a description and write some content, uh, like a little bit of content for that pages. And we were able to get um, 300, more than 300 keywords around like plus size fetch where, uh, and a lot of them immediately ran on the first page, which shows that this strategy is quite successful. And uh, when we talk about SEO, I would, I would, I, I prefer to talk it uh, about it from like a business perspective, and from a business perspective, being able to just copy and paste 30, 50 of your categories, write a little bit of content, and get a lot of really relevant keywords on the first page, and the sales is amazing. So like uh, amount of value, what you could get with that strategy in comparison to amount of like work you need to do is it, just amazing. And uh, the last but not least is product page search engine optimization. And um, uh, it will not be like classic because it will not start like my presentation will not start with schema org titles, descriptions, page speed, uh, prices and uh, content on a product page because it will start with a question. Question, is there a search volume for your product at all? So maybe you have a product which is like there is no um, search demand for this specific product. So nobody is looking for that product. Um, and in this case, just make that page nice for visitor and uh, just leave it for like other marketing channels. It will be on your website and people will visit that page from, from categories if they will land on category page. But if yes, uh, you need to check is uh, this product is like only one product relevant for that search intent. For example, if you have like leather dress and uh, there is only one leather dress on your website and there is a search demand for a leather dress, okay, you can optimize that uh, product page. But if you have 20 different leather dresses, uh, you should create a category because category will rank higher than um, than product page always. And uh, at some, uh, I probably like, should, uh, should include that in the, into this presentation, but there was a really nice case study and example when we just like create uh, categories instead of ranking uh, for product pages. And you can literally see how Google replaced uh, product URL with category URL in a Google search uh, like results page and immediately got from like third page to first page, which is also a really good way. And um, how that product page should like look, how it should structure. You should have H1 tag, you should have professional images. In a perfect case scenario, you should also have like real users images, like when people, like on Amazon, when people got the product, uh, they can take a photo and publish that photo like with a review and people will be able to see product from like in, in different lighting on different people, uh, especially that's important when we talk about like fashion brands because like uh, where like any clothes can look really different on different people. We should have some specs. We should have description, video, reviews, prices, deliver information, and FAQ section. And uh, what you don't need to have on your website, it's a uh, like, huge amount of useless content from a content writer to make that page looks like rank better because this strategy is very uh, like not cost efficient. I saw how projects with uh, like some venture capital who has like pretty decent amount of money for a marketing budget were writing just absurd amount of content for product pages. And that gives like really little difference um, at the end of the day. So yeah, don't do that. How to on, find keywords. On that very quickly, if you go back one slide to the yeah, product sure. pages, I think you mentioned it and I, I've, I've always thought this as well. 
Amazon does this best. Amazon beats everyone for this product page structure in any single way. So if you look at their H1, they forced the person selling the Amazon product to SEO optimize themselves for the platform. And in doing so, they optimize for Google as well. So Amazon cracked this growth, growth loop so early. Amazon forced you to do professional images. They let reviewers upload their images. They force you to add specs, descriptions. They encourage videos. Everyone knows Amazon has reviews. They're the cheapest on price. Amazon has free delivery. And Amazon even has an FAQ at the bottom. So like Amazon completely wins in product page structure. If you're ever wondering how to do it, you just go and copy the biggest marketplace in the world and you will very quickly get it right. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so how to find keywords? You can just go to hrefs.com or samrush.com, put your any competitor's website in a search bar and you will see that probably your competitor's URLs for products starts with like domain name slash product slash like product name. And you can get that like mm, domain with a like product slash product and put that again into HRF or SEMrush and get data only for product pages or like filter for on the product pages. And you will be able to see a lot of keywords which are associated with that pages. And um, just by going through that keywords, you will be able to get a lot of ideas uh, of what uh, keywords there are on the market what you need to target and like what's the search demand and the search demand is like the most important part of search engine optimization like that proper structure is, is the most important part uh and uh, the last uh, but not least is uh, structured data and as you can see on this screenshot i have just google by dji media three in new york and i can see um official website some other like random website and at the bottom we can see best buy which is the same as amazon they are like huge and they are doing their work properly in getting cheap uh, search traffic and bring it to the website and as you can see other websites kind of look a little bit boring and uh, best buy website has rating has 600 more than 600 true views and it has even uh, different price options and why uh, why Google don't show that information on uh, a DJI website or like that other random website in the middle? Because uh, Best Buy done proper work on structured data. If you want to have that, you because it's quite a, it's a little bit technical, but a short way to get that that uh, to your website as well is to send these four links to your tech team It's basically documentation how to do that and then you can test that with uh, that link it is a free service from google and you can just open it and uh, paste any if you will find some interesting examples of uh, pages and websites which are like has a rich snippet which looks really beautiful google search results you can just copy and paste uh, URL and Google will analyze that to you and show what uh, like what types of structured data, data they use. And you can just like basically implement the same data, just give it to your developer, send a documentation and say that like, please do that to my website. It's, it's literally like this, this amount of code, it's not a problem. Or even it can be done without any, um, like coding work if uh, you will install a plugin which has capability to use that structured data it could be done like for wordpress and like a lot of other content management system so at the end of the day to be able to really successfully grow your e-commerce project in um, google search results you need to have like obviously home page you need to have a lot of categories you need to be really um, like really do your homework in terms of like finding the best structure and finding a lot of keywords to be able to understand like how search demand to create a lot of categories and a lot of subcategories and uh, you also need a blog to target that kind of pages which impossible to target another way and be smart when you're writing about uh, when you're writing the blog content because 
you need to understand like why you write on this specific content. You may attract uh, people who are ready to buy with this content, or you may attract just informational, general informational traffic uh, just to boost your domain because Google will treat you better when you have a lot of traffic. And um, yeah, that's that's uh, that's a whole website structure. And I think I will pass to Aman on this poll. Aman, sweet, sweet. Do you mind if I share screen? Yes. Awesome. Thank you. Cool. So there was a lot that happened um, in that in that section. So we went through. So you can see my screen. So we went through going very back very quickly. We went through single product sites. So we walked through how if you're a single site, you should focus on these types of blog pages. We then came and explained multi products and said, you can do the three the same, but your focus should be on categories and creating as many category pages as possible that fit search intent. And then we showed you some quick hacks that are very, very valuable. And then finally, we went through product page SEO. So this is how you optimize your product page, but only in the event that you can't create a category. So there's lots of opportunities here. Also, if a competitor's website in this scenario could be an Amazon link, that also works very well. And you see every page that Amazon is, uh, is, is ranking for on Google. And then we also went through structuring your site. So we showed that generally, if you're a multi-product site, you want to have these category sections, subcategories. You want to have a blog with some posts, and that's generally the structure you're optimizing for. Um, as, an, as a quick question, and I'm curious about the developer resources everyone has, um, do you guys currently have developers in-house? Is that something, you, if, if I said, if I gave you this rich text data, could you go and implement it? Or is that something that's actually quite difficult? Awesome. Actually, surprising. So 33% um, said yes. 50%-ish said no, and 17% said sort of. Um, sort of probably means that you may have someone helping you out, I'm guessing, or you don't like what they do or what, for whatever reason. So it makes sense. So it kind of lays me up into my quick section on one of our partners, which is DZ, awesome partner. Um, they are a developer marketplace. So they can help you get developers very quickly um, at good prices, and they essentially let you put up a project and then the developers bid to be on the project. So it's a much easier way of vetting and going through developers. And then DZ also have a guarantee on the back end. So what's really easy is you can actually do this now, or you can do it whenever you want, but you can click on the DZ website and go to the top bar banner. And it's something called ecosystem pulse. So what it means is you can tell them what dev you're looking for. You don't need to hire it now. Um, and then they will send you a weekly or fortnightly email saying these devs are, are potentially available for you. And so this way, when you need the perfect dev, you just go in your emails and you have them there already. You don't have to go um, hustling on Upwork or Fiverr or talking to lots of founder friends to work out who it is. So this is a really easy way. You can set it up in two minutes just to know if there's devs available for what you want to do. Cool. So in terms of agenda, um, we've gone through the five truths of e-com SEO. We've gone through the single product Ecom playbook, and we've gone through the multi product ecom playbook, and we've spoken about easy ship and easy. Now, as a bonus, I want to talk about how you market cross channel with SEO and PPC and email. So, I've done this strategy myself, so I'm super keen to give it away. Um, we're probably going quite short on time, so if you have any questions, just please ping it in the chat, and I will try to prioritize them so we do get them done before we run out. Um, but cool, so cross channel marketing. So cross-channel marketing is when you have your SEO traffic and you start layering on additional channels which are already running, like Meta and like Google, um, and even email marketing to increase the profitability um, or your ROAS at the bottom of your funnel. So what this in practical terms means is you take cold traffic from SEO, and I, actually I don't want to say cold, I'm going to say warm traffic, because SEO traffic is pre-qualified the person Googling the keyword is openly saying they have an intent on some sort of level to purchase. So you take warm traffic from Google and you retarget on paid social and email. So I'm going to show you how this works. So Google comes in, you have amazing blog pages, category pages, and product pages. And as a result, you win lots of traffic from Google. 
And we know each is going to convert a certain amount and you're going to make a bit of money from blog, a lot of money from category and a hell of a lot of money from product. But in all these scenarios, you're still maybe missing 70%, 80% of traffic hasn't purchased, but they were interested in the product. So what you can do is step one, simply have an email sign up form. So generally in e-com, I would suggest you use Klaviyo. And with Klaviyo, you can create an email pop-up sign up form, which says, do you want 10% off? Do you want a guide to the best watches? Any sort of offer you can give, you can lay it up there. Now with this offer, you can then remarket and you can print money. So I've worked with many e-com stores and every e-com store I've worked with, I've managed to take their revenue to, to drive 30% of attributable revenue from Klaviyo or from email. So this channel I know very quickly is very, very lucrative, just doing this itself. And all you need to do as a leading step is to create this signup form. Now, the second thing you need to do is set up all your tracking pixels. So if you're already running Facebook ads and Google ads and, and Reddit and Snapchat, you already have tracking pixels set up to measure conversion events. Now, all you want to do is make sure these tracking pixels are also collecting data on all your website visitors and they're helping track that data. As a result, say Snapchat pixel understands who's visiting your website, matches it with someone on their database and is able to then retarget to them. So in this scenario, you have the pic tracking pixels, you push into retargeting channels, such as Google, Facebook, Twitter, et cetera, and then you retarget them, pushing them back in your funnel. So if you had a blog page, how to start your watch collection, this person is really interested in watches and it's time to push them down the funnel. So I might run them a retargeting ad of here's the top 10 best first watches. And that's an amazing customer journey I'm taking them down under. If my consumer happened to go on a category page called, cool, I don't know, highest status watches or most expensive watches, I'm going to show them a product page in my retargeting ads of one of my most expensive watches because it fits that consumer journey. So what you can do in this stack is layer upon Google onto your pages, you layer on email, and then you also layer on retargeting. And this really does improve your ROAS quite a lot. The interesting thing is whoever's doing this, all their paid marketing guys will take, uh, will be like, oh, look, the ROAS is really high and they will take attribution for it. But truly the attribution is kind of coming from, from Google and from organic because you source that traffic at the beginning. So as a site-wide thing, this is a really healthy thing to do for your business and you should be doing it straight away. So in general, or in summary, we've went through the agenda, five truths of e-commerce SEO, the playbooks for single products and multi-products, and I've given you a bonus on how to market cross-channel with SEO, PPC, and email. So that's actually the full presentation. Um, thank you so much for attending, um, and I'm super keen to answer any questions. So please drop them in. Oh, I had a quick question, actually. Let me ask you one. Is everyone, are you guys currently investing SEO or are you thinking about it, but you want to, what's your current stage? Oh, super interesting. 50% are investing in SEO, which is good. 50% um, want to invest, so if I say 40% want to invest in SEO and then 10% don't want to invest in SEO. Um, cool. So, um, for the 50% that sorry for the 50% that are investing in SEO how's it guys going what what's 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 your current performance like are you guys doing the things we're mentioning cool. I'll let you guys respond to that one otherwise does Clavio work with WordPress or WooCommerce yeah Clavio is really good um Clavio recently got investment i think 100 million co-invested from Shopify so Clavio is really best in class um Prices. Um, so generally, I wouldn't recommend anyone really do SEO for under like 3K a month around that number. Um, and the reason why I say it is the majority of the brunt of the cost in SEO is actually in content creation. Like I just gave you all the technical value. I told you how to set up the website. Like that's not where the value is. The value isn't actually executing it and doing it. And then doing that deep keyword research to work out what are those categories and how am I going to tackle it one by one by one? So when you pay for SEO, you're kind of paying for the cost of the head of SEO. So for example, you're paying for Victor and then you're paying for the army that comes behind Victor, which is the content team. 
So that's why I say generally 3K minimum, you're going to be investing because anything less than that, you either can't afford a good SEO guy and or you can't afford the content they're creating. We're working on a new website. That's awesome. We have one person working on an SEO, but they also work for other companies as well. We are gaining traffic slowly, but I'm excited to share this info with him. Awesome. We, we hear this a lot. Um, I hope that he has like a content team behind him or he has someone to delegate content to. Otherwise, there is a maximum that he can go. I think SEO was like a term, search engine optimization. It kind of makes it sound like you're just like twiddling some needles. But in this presentation, I want you to know that it was like, it was like a very big move you make. When you make content, it's not like a small needle move. It's you're moving a really big lever and you're powering it through fuel. Uh, our store is a small one. Sorry, go for it, Victor. Yeah, I think a lot of questions are related to like, uh, can we get a like recording? Uh, maybe we should mention like our YouTube channel. We it will be there, so like it's like super easy way to get definitely recording of this webinar and from our other webinars. Yeah, so I'll put the recording in there. You can also watch a bunch of other ones, and um, I will ping out an email tomorrow with the slides and the recording. Um, which shopping cart do you recommend? Oh, good question. Um, I've done Magento, Shopify, and Woo. If you don't want to have a big dev team or you don't want to do too much work, go for Shopify. If you're happy to like edit stuff a lot, go for WooCommerce, but then you get more control. Victor, would you agree? Um, yeah, and uh, sometimes if you have like good good WordPress developer, which you already know, and you will save yourself from all that pain looking for a good developer, you can go to WordPress. And if you have the same situation with a WooCommerce, when you definitely know the guy uh, who will do that for, for a good price. But in general, uh, WooCommerce and WordPress give you gives you more flexibility, but more opportunities to do a bad job, but more opportunities to do a good job as well. But uh, one of our like best uh, case studies was on uh, Shopify, and we were able to. If you, I, I would say, if you are uh, like really, actually, two two of uh, our clients who I mentioned there was in Shopify. So, yeah, like Shopify will commerce both will, will work. Uh, let me ask you some questions, Victor, from from the participants' mm -hmm. perspective. Um, if the content team is limited in capability. So they don't have much capacity, let's say even. Can you still see gains with SEO or can, is nothing really possible? Uh, absolutely possible was a good strategy. But on another hand, we need to understand that I saw, uh, I saw a project and, uh, which had some way to get an amazing amount of really good uh, content. Like it was professional content. I don't know, maybe it's a like, has a connections in a university and for students to work like for a, for a good mark. Um, but they've done a huge amount of really good content, but that content was not like structured to answer for search intent. And like literally thousands of pages were bringing zero, like close to zero traffic. And I saw other examples where with a limit, very limited content resources, uh people were able to publish like not a lot of pages but target them so good so and that pages brings a lot of traffic so when you have a little limited resources the more limited resources you you have the better your seo decision making should be i would say that mm -hmm. um how does react slash nextjs websites work well with seo structure Google just don't care about what you have on the back end because Google don't see your back end. Google see on the front. Uh, and if you have on the front uh, render side rendering, if you have separate URLs for the different pages and you have all the pages being able to index and you have all that like canonical stuff uh, to protect your website from duplicate pages, Absolutely good, and uh, even faster if you like have a React JS. Probably your website is faster and better, and you have better developers. So all good. Just like to make sure you will done it right, and have some SEO expert to to check it out. Awesome.
um how do you feel about yoast uh use it for every wordpress so yes okay bullish on yoast um our store is a small one just a few products and they don't want to become a massive e-com do they still need to have category pages like if you can uh, for example we have a brand uh 96 nars which are like scented diffusers and there is now a lot of products but we still can create a category like a birthday present candles uh night party candles whatever so we can still play with the categories even when we have like 15 products and um you don't need to overload that your website with all that categories. They can just exist and be accessible from sitemap and URL. Uh, so you don't need a huge menu and your website will not look like huge because you will create all that categories. They should just exist and be enable, uh, people should be able to access them f like with a link or from Google search or through like sitemap. Oh um seo tools victor what do you use like uh there is no way around hrefs or semrush uh yeah you mentioned that um there is no way around google search console which is like free and you should definitely use it and uh, it's good to have also like scream and frog website auditor software on a computer to be able to scan some uh, website uh websites but mm, and uh, like if there is a lot of smaller products where uh, which you need only like uh, sometimes definitely need something to like check uh, response codes for servers uh definitely need if you have a multi-language and multi like country website you definitely need uh, some uh craftland checker tools uh which are also like free and accessible in the internet so like, yeah basic is uh for me personally hrefs uh google search console and screaming frog cool um uh seranking is uh, as i remember it was a uh, syrup start before and now it's seranking but i may i may may uh may like be confused but other tools are like so last time i've checked a lot of other tools except like hrefs and semrush was on a z level of not being accurate they that at some point they become like just database for keywords and i don't see any point to like pay for a service which will show you like a random charts and all you will be able to get is like list of keywords so like probably hrefs or semrush like and uh, I understand it's it's not cheap, like two hundred dollars for an Ahrefs. But if you like really do an SEO, you 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 have you need to have much bigger budget. Cool. Um, Squarespace for more, more. I think it, the CMS doesn't really matter that much in the grand scheme of things. It's just kind of how you use it and how much you have to pay your developers to to edit it the way you need to get edited. Um. Cool. Awesome. So we're going to be calling it there for the session. Um, thank you everyone so much for attending. If you have any other questions, feel free to drop me an email. Um, I'm in a new I'm in a new So it's all in capital letters. I'm sorry. Um, I'm not shouting. Um, drop us an email and then we can go from there. But look, thank you so much for attending. I hope this was useful. And then you'll get the recordings and the slides uh, tomorrow. Thank you so much, guys. Bye-bye. Yeah, thank you. Bye-bye.